Welcome back to PCS Adventures Lab. Today we're going to talk about the infrared sensor for your RIQ. The infrared sensors are able to sense infrared radiation, which is a type of light that has a wavelength greater than visible light. So these sensors can be attached just like most of your others using a basic sensor cable. We'll go ahead and plug that into our brain, attach it to our infrared sensor, and then we're going to put these on the bottom of our build because we're going to use our RIQ to follow a line. So we'll hook up our second one here, and by putting these infrared sensors on the bottom on opposite sides, we should be able to program our build to follow a line. Alrighty, here we are back in the Cortex. Let's go ahead and create a new program. And what we're going to do now is we're going to program our RIQ to follow a line using the infrared sensors. The infrared sensors read infrared radi radiation and when we have two vastly colored items, as in a white and a black, the infrared values uh, red are going to be quite a bit different, which makes it very easy to program. So let's begin our program by setting motor A and B on. Begin by turning these motors on. Then we're going to include a loop to constantly be checking for our sensor values. Now within our loop, we are going to need an if statement. And with our if statement, we will include a conditional. And this conditional is going to say that if our sensor is less than some number, we're going to run this code. So we're going to use a value of 500. We're going to use a value of 500 because that's right in the middle of the road. Your, most of your values are going to be in the range of 0 to 1,000. So 500 is about middle of the road. We'll go ahead and branch off of this conditional with motor A and B turned off, followed by motor A turn on for two tenths of a second. So let's talk a little bit about what's happening here. This is saying that if our sensor zero is less than 500, meaning that our, one of our sensors on our RAQ hit the black line, then we want to turn both of our motors off so that we can only turn one on um, and we'll turn it on for a short amount of time. We turn on the motor on the opposite side of the infrared that hit the black line. This forces the rover, the RAQ, to turn and become more centered over the black line that it's following. So now we're going to need another if statement but our program's a little bunched up, so we're going to add some spacers in here to give ourselves some more room to work with. We'll go one more. All right, now we're going to add in our second if statement. So this is for the um, this if statement with a conditional is for the other infrared sensor. So in our setup we have our sensors connected to ports 0 and 1. So we'll call this one sensor 1 and we're going to say the same thing. If it's less than 500 oops, if it's less than 500 we are going to run the code in our if statement. All right. Um, can I not? There we go. Okay, if sensor one is less than 500, we're going to run a really similar code, except for that instead of motor A turning on for two tenths of a second, we will turn motor B on for two tenths of a second. So we'll begin by setting motors A and B off, then calling motor B, 
and turning it on for two tenths of a second. So I'll put a value of two here for two tenths of a second. Alrighty, now because we've turned our motors off, if any of these if statements are true, what we want to do here at the end of our loop is we want to call motors A and B once again, motors A and B, and we're going to turn them on so that if either of those if statements are true and we turn our motors off, at the end of every loop, it will turn on our motors once again. Then finally, we can attach our end statement. And let's review our program to make sure it makes sense. So we begin by turning motors A and B on. Then within a loop, we check the status of both of our IR sensors on either side of the line using if statements. If sensor 0 is less than 500, meaning our infrared sensor hit the black line, we're going to turn our motors off, then turn just motor A on for 2 tenths of a second to correct our RIQ's position so that it is directly over the line. Second, we have another if statement here that does the exact same code but on the opposite side for our second infrared sensor. If that one hits the black line, we'll need to turn motor B on to correct the RIQ's position. And finally, within our loop, we turn motors A and B back on so that it can continue its path around the loop. Alrighty, it looks good.